Apple has the fastest chip on Earth. Asus has the most disappointing announcement that I've seen, and oh, the 5090 cooler. You want to talk about? S you want to talk about that? It's, it's a big deal. Let's talk about that. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Friday, May 10th, 2024. We're gonna start off today talking about some preliminary benchmarks that are coming out about Apple's M4 chip. This bad boy is gonna be slapped into an iPad, so you know you're gonna get full use out of it, but it turns out that when you put it through some synthetic benchmarks, it's the fastest CPU on the planet, has the highest single core score out of any CPU ever. It beats the 14900KS, which runs at 6.2 gigahertz, despite the fact that the M4 runs at 4.4 gigahertz. Apple has done it again, destroyed the competition, made themselves glorious, and created a, a thing that you wanna put into your system. And it's, it's great, 22% faster than the M3 in single core. 25% faster in multi-core and it has more cores, so it's it's a big deal. It's got it's got a lot of performance. And you might be able to tell from my uh tone that I'm choosing to take with this, um, that there's a reason you kind of have to take synthetic benchmarks with a massive grain of salt. And it turns out that when you look at the Geekbench score, these numbers are obscene, all right? Destroys the 14900KS, no problem, single core score. The 14900KS is like 3,300 points. The M4 iPad, an iPad, not a CPU that requires 400 watts of cooling, is running at 3,800 compared to the 14900KS's 3,300. Destroys. But turns out that a lot of that is because the neural engine that they put into the M4 chip uh, boosted its performance in scalable matrix extensions. One single part of the Geekbench benchmark increased it by 200%. And so that one single boost made it so that it is better than everything else on the market. But if you take that away, this chip is 3% better than the M3. Just 3% if you take away the scalable matrix, which is exactly what neural processing engines are for. The 14900KS doesn't have an NPU in it, so a more fair comparison is gonna be something like Meteor Lake, the upcoming Lunar Lake, AMD's Ryzen AI9s that are supposed to be launching at Computex. Those are gonna be more fair shakes in terms of what we've got going on here. So despite the fact that the number is bigger, um, and it is, still a very impressive thing that they're fitting in a very thin iPad. Uh, the idea that it destroys the 14900K in single core performance, not likely something that's happening, especially since the 14900KS is not meant to work on matrix things. If you have a 14900KS, you're supposed to have a graphics card, and then your 4090 is just gonna absolutely uh, destroy whatever the M4 is. So uh, it's 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 tomato tomato pricing is you gotta throw all that out. It's just don't trust synthetic benchmarks for everything. Is it a good chip? Looks to be. Is it the best thing ever made? Looks pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the best, but it is the best. The number's higher, Brett. What do you mean it's not the best? You're just you're just an Apple shill. That's that's what's happening right now. But while I may prefer Apple, the FCC is making it so that ISPs or internet service providers cannot prefer any type of data that you're trying to use. So this happened after net neutrality was reinstated where ISPs couldn't differentiate networking traffic. However, one of the things that was kind of ambiguous was could they have like fast lanes, right? Like they're not throttling your, your regular stuff, but they have this like, extra level thing for gaming. Your your gaming enhancement is $50 a month and we make sure your gaming's prioritized on our network. And the net neutrality language of the new legislation was pretty unclear about it until they just dropped the official final legislation about it and ISPs can't do that anymore. Specifically saying that we clarify that bias or broadband internet access service providers decision to speed up on the basis of internet content applications or services would impair or degrade other content applications or services which are not given the same treatment. And so they're not allowed to do that, which makes absolute sense. If you're prioritizing a single type of network connection, that means other things don't get that priority, therefore are not treated the same. And so there was just some ambiguity in the language before where it wasn't clear if it was gonna be removed. And now it's clear that, uh, hey, that gaming lane you're paying for, your ISP is gonna find another way to squeeze that money out of you, okay? But while fast lanes are getting removed from internet here in the United States, LG is getting rid of LCD panel production. They are moving on to OLED and OLED only with them looking to sell off the last of their Chinese factories that currently make LCD panels. Samsung's already kind of moved on from this. 
LG is doing the same. It's not necessarily anything groundbreaking. They've announced their intent to do this for the last several years, but it's looked like OLED and other versions of panels are going to be the wave of the future. And the wave of the future is Reese because he's six hours ahead of me in time zone, which basically means he lives in the future. So I hope uh, if there's anything that I need to know about that's gonna happen today, he would tell me before it happens. That'd be great. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. Happy Friday, everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. And hey, look at that, some deals. Starting off today, we have the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro closed back studio headphones for only $129 with included promo code, making them $40 off. But then next up, we have this InnoCN 27 inch 1440p 240 Hertz gaming monitor for only $199.99 with included promo code, making it $70 off. And then lastly, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 7800X 3D going for an unbelievably low price of $320.56, which is the lowest I've ever seen it. And hey, if you want to be processor bros, then you know what to do. And with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, uh, uh, there's a deal about the RG Ally. Asus uh, clearly continuously fumbling the bag with the marketing surrounding this device. You might remember that it was initially announced as a April Fool's joke that they were like, just kidding, it's not really April Fool's. This thing's gonna be real, but not in a way where they were like, everybody loved it, so we're gonna make it. They were always planning on making it. It's been a nightmare in terms of that. But then they announced yesterday, because it was the one year anniversary of the launch of the RG Ally, allegedly, that they are going to make a new one. And they had a live stream ready to go they wanted to tell you everything about the next new rg ally there was some speculation that it was going to be coming in black because there was a posted image that had one in black at the back of this the area and so the live stream got delayed by an hour there were technical issues that happened and then within that live stream they didn't talk really anything at all about the physical hardware and people are just the, the upset with it the disappointment disappointment the whole thing could have been a twitter post this was disappointing the idea ended up being that you watch that live stream for them to tell you to come back on june 2nd to watch another live stream where they're actually going to tell you all of the details about the next rg ally so just an announcement for an announcement for a product that's going to be released sometime in the future well done asus that's that's masterfully uh, convoluted. And I'm gonna announce something that's gonna get announced at some point in the future, I guess that's my whole job, is that Intel Panther Lake, we're getting some details about the next next-gen mobile processors that are supposed to be coming out in 2025, but the big deal here is that not only are the CPUs gonna get updated, but reports are indicating that it's actually gonna get XE3 graphics, which is the celestial setup that we're looking forward to. So it looks like, hopefully, Intel should have Battle Mage later this year, Celestial later next year, Potentially, we don't know if that's going to necessarily result in desktop cards. It does seem like the mobile versions are going to preempt whatever's going to happen on desktop. We'd like to see it. I want to see more of it. And I don't know if I want to see more of this sim racing situation that's going around because it's being announced that Corsair is looking at buying Fanatec, which is a company that makes sim racing gear, which is all well and good, I guess. Corsair, ever since they went public, has started acquiring a whole bunch of brands. They obviously have Elgato, they have Scuff, they have have uh, Origin Gaming as a, as a pre-built company. They also recently picked up Drop, and now they have Fanatec that's coming under their umbrella. It appears that mergers and acquisitions is going to be a big strategy for their growth as a public company. But this just continues a very weird trend that I've been seeing across the industry, and we kind of first noticed it at Computex last year. Cooling companies have racing sim companies for whatever reason. EK Waterblocks, they have racing sims. Asatec, They've got racing sims. Was there somebody else? Cooler Master? They had a racing sim at, at CES. They're all about it. I don't know why. I, I guess there's some crossover. When we talked to, I think it was Asatech about it. We were like, what do you, why, what, what is, what is the reasoning here? They told us that the founder's son was really into sim racing and that's why they were doing it. But I, once it's, it's, it's fine, right? That's a good explanation. Seeing it happen with a second cooling company, something's up here. Seeing Corsair get in on this, what is, what is the deal? Gotta have them ribs. Did you just say gotta have them ribs? Gotta have them ribs. It looks like we gotta have the name of the next generation of NVIDIA graphics cards that are coming out because we do know that Blackwell's already been announced as the GPUs that are gonna be coming out from NVIDIA later this year. But now we know the name of the GPUs after that, and it's gonna be called Rubin. After Vera Rubin, who was a famed astronomer who did a lot of great research on galaxies. And so it, uh, you can expect 
that uh, the, the GPU name, instead of having an A for Ada Lovelace or B for Blackwell, is now going to have an R for Ruben. But let's talk about what we are getting with the gaming versions of the Blackwell cards, because there's new details coming out on what NVIDIA is prepping in terms of the cooler situation, and it's a lot. They're looking at cooling capacity anywhere from 250 watts on the low end all the way up to 600 watts, which is a beefy honking chomper. So it looks like they're going to have a high-power GPU coming out, but while they are testing cooling capacity, capacity for the Founders Editions up to 600 watts. We have seen this before. A lot of people have seen the picture of the 4090 Ti 900 watt cooler, and they didn't end up actually releasing that. Additionally, the 450 watt cooling situation that we have for the 4090 is all well and good, but the Founders Edition runs closer to 400 watts. So just despite the fact that we might have a cooler that can handle 600 watts of cooling capacity doesn't necessarily mean that the Founders Edition is going to run at that, but it does mean that in Nvidia is looking at potentially beefing up their 5090 Founders Edition card to consume a lot more wattage. Now, they can't go above 600 watts if they wanted to keep it at one 16-pin power connector. They would have to go up to two of those, which I guess it's not beyond Nvidia to potentially do that in the future. But we've already seen problems with Melton and all of that, so just, just get ready. It's not quite clear if Nvidia is actually going to change the design of the Founders Edition, if there's going to be a different aspect to it. We've seen the 40 Super Series actually got this matte black look, which was very nice to see. I'm curious to see if uh, we had the 30 and 40 series kind of look about the same, just a mild difference in size here and there. It's probably time for them to completely overhaul it. So we'll have to see if they uh, they end up doing that this year with Blackwell. And I'm going to see what you and I'm going to see what you guys did in the comments yesterday. We got Simple Tech over on Floatplane saying getting older is definitely OK. After 20 years as an IT admin, I'm reinventing myself as a programmer and loving every moment. Each year added to me is just one more year of winning, no matter what happens to during that year, plus one is a win. W attitude, simple tech, W attitude. Kryptonite said, I was going to comment yesterday about how AI is the new buzzword, but you covered it. You should play that rant whenever someone complains about AI being everywhere. I don't think my rant was very succinct enough to like play it every single time, but uh, I do have that locked and loaded. I, I do I do like to complain about things. And then Dapinage saying, so Brett, I get that you were explaining the signs at the end, but then the logo right after actually shows the sign was wrong. Is there some joke going over my head? Uh, the joke is me. I'm the joke. Hi. I forgot what our logo actually looks like, and I forgot that the blue actually goes on the left and the pink goes on the right, because what ended up happening was in order to route the cables, the power cables, for these signs properly, we flipped both of them upside down. So uh, the cables typically were supposed to go down. We routed it so that they went up. So actually, uh, both of these are wrong. And that's great. And it kind of, my point still stood from the end of uh, the comment response yesterday, which is, it doesn't matter. None of, none of this is serious, okay? If, if that's an N, H, and that's an HN, one of them is still wrong. One of them has the colors on the wrong side, okay? Like, it's still it's still a broken thing. But uh, who, who, if it bothers you, good. Good, keep it bothering you. It's it's good to have a little rumble in your heart. Then over on YouTube, we got Wolvie saying, I feel like instead of dancing in circles, Intel should just tell the consumers the way it is, then redeem themselves by releasing something that's competitive. I think people don't want to fall for big marketing selling products with information incorrectly. No, no. You get bad, and then we say it wasn't that bad, and you just deal with it. And then Paul Anderson said, don't worry. As someone who is familiar with Intel speak, I can translate what Intel is saying perfectly and convey it in very simple terms. What Intel is trying to say is, we are royally screwed. And work warbly saying, I like that. Time for another episode of Hot News and Not Who's. I'm not Who's. So my ear balls are allowed here. I don't even know what a Who's is. Ooh. Oh, it's an owl? Ooh. Oh, I get it now. And then I'm Solo Bolo said, was that a Nelly reference? I don't like how casual that was. Whoa. Continue. What do you mean you don't? That's, that's a whole thing is casual references to obscure things that you probably forgot about along the ages, but then we decided to bring back up for no other reason besides uh, we, we didn't forget about it. You got, any, you got anything else, Kyler, you want to grace these people with? What is today but yesterday's tomorrow?